Hello and welcome back to Flute Tube. I've done a couple of book reviews slash recommendations slash summaries for this channel. One was on the inner game of tennis and one was the inner game of music. And I'll keep doing book reviews from time to time when I have something that I think my students should be interested in. Today I have just this tiny little book. It's very short. It would take you about the space of an afternoon to read. And I realized lately that I'm often referring to this book with my students, asking if they've read it and just talking about some of the ideas in this book. It's called Jonathan Livingston Siegel by Richard Bach. And on the front cover, it calls itself the most celebrated inspirational fable of our time. Since it calls itself an inspirational fable, I don't want to spell out the ideas and the meaning in this book too much. That's better for you to take the little bit of time needed to read it and think about for yourself. But I was assigned to read this book in fourth grade, and I don't know if kids are still given the assignment to read this book. After all, when I read it, it had been written much more recently than it has been for kids today. But it did make a big impact on me. I was assigned to read it just a few months after I got my first flute, and I've wondered if that might be part of why the ideas in this book are so closely associated in my mind with my philosophy about music and art and practicing. To give you an idea of the general philosophy and thoughts that you'll find in this book, I want to go ahead and read you the first few paragraphs of it. It was morning and the new sun sparkled gold across the ripples of a gentle sea. A mile from shore, a fishing boat chummed the water and the word for breakfast flock flashed through the air till a crowd of a thousand seagulls came to dodge and fight for bits of food. It was another busy day beginning. But way off alone, out by himself, beyond boat and shore, Jonathan Livingston Seagull was practicing. A hundred feet in the sky, he lowered his webbed feet, lifted his beak, and strained to hold a painful, hard, twisting curve through his wings. The curve meant that he would fly slowly, and now he slowed until the wind was a whisper in his face, until the ocean stood still beneath him. He narrowed his eyes in fierce concentration, held his breath, forced one single more inch of curve. Then his feathers ruffled, he stalled and fell. Seagulls, as you know, never falter, never stall. To stall in the air is for them disgrace and it is dishonor. But Jonathan Livingston Seagull, unashamed, stretching his wings again in that trembling hard curve, slowing, slowing, and stalling once more, was no ordinary bird. Most goals don't bother to learn more than the simplest facts of flight, how to get from shore to food and back again. For most goals, it is not flying that matters, but eating. For this goal though, it was not eating that mattered, but flight. More than anything else, Jonathan Livingston Siegel loved to fly. I'm sure you get the idea that this little book talks about flying just for the enjoyment and satisfaction of doing it well, becoming a bit obsessed with ideas and practicing them long into the night while other people are going to sleep, but you just want to find perfection in what you're trying to accomplish. Even when other people don't appreciate your efforts or understand your ideas that you want to bring to perfection. It talks about flight and life and excellence and teaching and love. And it talks about how becoming excellent in flight helped Jonathan to become excellent in other ways, helping others to learn and discover what he himself had found that improved his life so much. I think it would be very easy to read this and aspire to physical excellence, like in some sport or if you're aspiring to become an Olympic athlete or something. But for me reading this, my mind automatically goes to art. The striving for perfection in technique that allows you to express yourself better. And the idea that striving for excellence through art or another form of self-expression can lead you to become overall a better and nobler person. I really believe that's the purpose of art in general, to strive for excellence and a deeper, better understanding of ourselves so that we can learn to have more sympathy, empathy, and love for those around us. Another great thing about reading this book is that it's packed 
full of really great photos of seagulls. So you can enjoy those. I remember a lot of them from when I read this book before. I'm going to read you just a handful of other passages that I think encapsulate the ideas in this book very well. Again, just to give you an idea of the kinds of thoughts that you'll find in this book. When Jonathan Seagull joined the flock on the beach, it was full night. He was dizzy and terribly tired, yet in delight he flew a loop to landing with a snap roll just before touchdown. When they hear of it, he thought, of the breakthrough, they'll be wild with joy. How much more there is now to living. Instead of our drab slogging forth and back to the fishing boats, there's a reason to life. We can lift ourselves out of ignorance. We can find ourselves as creatures of excellence and intelligence and skill. We can be free. We can learn to fly. Jonathan Siegel spent the rest of his days alone, but he flew way out beyond the far cliffs. His one sorrow was not solitude. It was that other gulls refused to believe the glory of flight that awaited them. They refused to open their eyes and see. He learned more each day. He learned that a streamlined high-speed dive could bring him to find the rare and tasty fish that schooled 10 feet below the surface of the ocean. He no longer needed fishing boats and stale bread for survival. He learned to sleep in the air, setting a course at night across the offshore wind, covering a hundred miles from sunset to sunrise. With the same inner control, he flew through heavy sea fogs and climbed above them into dazzling clear skies. In the very times when every other gull stood on the ground, knowing nothing but mist and rain, he learned to ride the high winds far inland to dine there on delicate insects. What he had once hoped for the flock, he now gained for himself alone. He learned to fly and was not sorry for the price that he had paid. Jonathan Siegel discovered that boredom and fear and anger are the reasons that a goal's life is so short. And with these gone from his thought, he lived a long, fine life indeed. A month went by or something that felt about like a month and Jonathan learned at a tremendous rate. He always had learned quickly from ordinary experience and now the special student of the elder himself he took in new ideas like a streamlined, feathered computer. As the days went past, Jonathan found himself thinking time and again of the earth from which he had come. If he had known there just a tenth, just a hundredth of what he knew here, how much more life would have meant. He stood on the sand and fell to wondering if there was a goal back there who might be struggling to break out of his limits, to see the meaning of flight beyond a way of travel to get a breadcrumb from a rowboat. Perhaps there might even have been one made outcast for speaking his truth in the face of the flock. And the more Jonathan practiced his kindness lessons, and the more he worked to know the nature of love, the more he wanted to go back to earth. For in spite of his lonely past, Jonathan Siegel was born to be an instructor. And his own way of demonstrating love was to give something of the truth that he had seen to a goal who asked only a chance to see truth for himself. I think you get the idea from those passages I read that this book is a story celebrating the strength of the individual and the joy of finding your own way, as it states on the back cover of the book. One thing I don't believe I ever realized when I was reading this in fourth grade is that Richard Bach was also a fighter pilot, a gypsy barnstormer, and an airplane mechanic. And then he continued to fly a seaplane. So it's not at all surprising that he would be inspired to write this fable about a seagull who wanted to seek excellence in flight, not just to follow what the rest of his flock was doing and try to grab breadcrumbs off of people who were nearby or scraps of fish off of the fishing boats. It's a great little fable for us to think about as we strive for excellence ourselves. And now I'm going to keep this copy I got a couple of weeks ago in my office for my students in case any of them want to come to me and borrow it and read it. It is very short, even shorter than it looks because of all the great photos that you find in the book as you read.